Paul from uh, Salt Haven, and uh, oh, and Brian, who have we got right here? This is uh, Miko Shakoba. Miko is a red-tailed hawk, and uh, he's one of our wildlife ambassadors that we take around to uh, schools and universities when we do our presentations. And uh, what does he think of people? Well, uh, Miko has been trained to be comfortable in front of people, and uh, he's still a young bird. He's still like kind of like a teenager, I guess you'd say, in bird years. And these birds can actually live to be about 25 years old. And uh, in fact, there was one just found in New York, 27 years old. He was banded 26 years ago. Uh, so they do have a, a relatively long lifespan, and uh, he's, uh, he's becoming very, very comfortable in front of people, but he still is very young. And uh, how wild is the wildlife here? Well, uh, Miko is, uh, let's just say, a little rambunctious, just like a teenager would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got lots of energy, curious about everything, uh, just wants to explore and, uh, and, and just having a ball with life, you know. Um, so, yeah, they, they're a little bit different than the more sedate uh, older ones, for sure. And how about that wingspan we just saw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about a four-foot wingspan. Uh, they, uh, they use that to their advantage. They, these are soaring birds. And uh, how do all the, 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 the hunter birds uh, relate to along a, uh, a bird scale? Are they all part of the same family, the different families? Well, they hunt differently, you know. These are soaring birds and they hunt uh, primarily by looking for their prey on the ground. Falcons, for instance, they'll, they fly uh, and catch their food in the air for the most part. So they're tail chasers, basically. They're, they're chasing other birds. And uh, falcons will even take down a Canada goose, you know, if they're hungry enough. Uh, these guys, uh, they'll catch everything from bats to, uh, uh, to mice. Uh, they're, uh, you know, and, and rabbits. Uh, um, so if, they, if they're hungry enough, they'll even go after dogs, actually. <laughs> and uh, how are birds of prey related in families or genus? Well, there's hawks and falcons and eagles and uh, those are primarily the three groups uh, there are others of course but uh, you could probably find a place for all of them in within those three groups there's other birds like kites and things like that as well but uh, as far as the birds of prey are concerned uh, those three groups usually uh, are uh, the, the ones that we see here in Ontario and you have ambassadors in all three groups uh, we do actually. We have uh, Bald Eagle that we're working with right now as a wildlife ambassador. He's not ready to go out yet. Would he be twice the size of this uh, one? Probably about three or four times the size, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, he weighs about eight pounds, uh, so to carry him around on the fist, well, it'd be like carrying around a jug of milk, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> on an extended arm for about an hour. <laughs> now, how much would a, uh, a hawk like this eat a day? Uh, he'll eat about uh, maybe 70 or 80 grams of food a day. We watch their weight carefully. Uh, we mm -hmm. don't want them getting too much uh, because then they just get fat and lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we don't want them to get not enough because then they start to suffer from that. They, you know, their weight starts to decrease and uh, they're just not happy. But, uh, What's in their diet? Well, they get venison, mice, um, chicken, uh, turkey necks. Um, uh, and we, we rotate that. They get, mm -hmm. they get vitamins as well every day. Vita hawk. <laughs> Vita hawk. <laughs> yeah. nice. And and how about uh, your bald eagle? How much would uh, that eat? Uh, that eat? Well, when he first came in, he ate a two pound chicken, <laughs> <laughs> all in one meal. <laughs> that gives you some idea. But generally speaking, uh, we'll keep his food down to about four hundred grams, four hundred fifty grams uh, per sitting. And he may not eat every day either. You know, he'll uh, he may go a day or two without eating. It just depends on how he feels, really. And what constitutes uh, daily exercise for a hawk? Well, we'll take him out and we'll fly him every day. Uh, he flies free every day, as a matter of fact, weather permitting. Uh, you know, if there's no high winds or there's no, uh, uh, you know, driving rain or, or, or you know, heavy snow. And um, he'll just follow us around. Uh, we'll walk through the fields and through the woods and, and uh, he just follows. And then when we call him in, uh, we'll give them a little tidbit of food for, you know, being obedient. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of fun to be with them and, and watch them in their natural environment. And, and would a bird of prey have any emotions? Does it get sad or happy or lonely? Or you know, that's hard to say because mm -hmm. their faces are so expressionless, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, their body language really says a lot. You know, like we vocalize and that's how we communicate. Uh, wild animals communicate very subtly and they do it through body language. So when you've worked with them for you know a couple of decades, you, you come to realize what that body language means and the subtlety of it. 
So, uh, you know, I'm not a, an expert by any stretch of the imagination because I'm still learning things as I go. And there's a lot more to learn that I probably won't even touch on before I die. But these, uh, these guys are uh, pretty amazing. And their language is universal pretty much from within the species. And, uh, but they do have their own little characteristics about them. There's no doubt about that. Personality and character plays a very big part of who they are. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thanks for being, for having us here. Thanks, Bill.